Have you ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix? If so, consider sending it my way. Just go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click that button to do so. And of course, thank you. I've started writing this story and thought about submitting it probably five or six times now, but I always kind of chicken out at the last minute. This happened to me over ten years ago now, when I was in grade school, so I think I always worry a bit that it'll be thrown out because I was a kid. Which is really kind of dumb, because I know you've covered stories of things that happened when the submitter was young before. But I'm an inherently anxious person, so I overthink things. I am particularly inclined to say that this really happened, though, because my mom still remembers it, too. When I was in, I think, the seventh grade, my mom was driving me home from school. We live on the outskirts of a suburb in the American Midwest, a nice area overall that bordered a lot of fields and open farmland. I was going to a private Christian school a little further into the main suburbs, but we lived in the more country-like part of the area, so my mom would pick me up after school every day to take me home. We didn't run buses, so I know now how much of an inconvenience this probably was in hindsight, but I always enjoyed the time, watching the exits of Targets and coffee shops turn to Walmarts and fast food and then to a stray gas station between patches of trees and neighborhoods, before ending as an open field. We would use this time to talk. I'm an only child, so me and my mom have always been particularly close. I would talk about what we learned in school that day, something funny that happened at lunch, or the latest drama that I really needed to vent that day. I was bullied as a kid. I will admit, which made it really nice to have a mom so willing to listen to me. And she would talk to me about the conversations that had popped up between her and my grandma that day, since she was employed as a caretaker for her. We'd also talk a lot about our favorite shows. My dad grew up on a healthy diet of comic books and Star Wars, something which he was very intent to pass on to me and my mom by proxy. I was never a super huge fan of Star Wars, which is blasphemy in certain circles, but at the time, I had fallen in love with Doctor Who and Star Trek. I also think this might have even been around when Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was airing, and I still remain a passionate MCU fan. So, with both of us watching the sci-fi shows nightly, Mom found herself dragged along with us into this abyss that is fandom culture. All this is to say that me and my mom, being alone together in our car that day, were big sci-fi fans, but otherwise weren't in any sort of altered mental state. So we were about at the junction point between gas station suburb and Walmart suburb. I don't remember what we were talking about at this point, maybe I was even on my iPod or something. But when we turned a corner, I remember Mom making a little gasping sound, her eyes landing on the space over one of the buildings and saying, Johnny, is that a blimp? I looked up, and yeah, there was a blimp, silver and moving slowly in the distance. It was oblong, metallic, literally a textbook picture of a blimp. It was flying pretty low to the ground probably two miles above the trees at most, so it was taking up a solid portion of the sky to our side. It looked like maybe what a blimp hanging decoration would look like in a kid's room. I don't know how best to describe it, but I want to be clear that this was a notable blimp. People would see it, and while we were hitting the outer edges of the suburbs, we still had traffic around us. This was a weird event in and of itself. I'd seen pictures of the Hindenburg and the like, but I had never seen a blimp actually in person before. So, at this point, me and my mom were just kind of chatting excitedly, 
Like, oh my god, that's so cool. What a weird thing. I wonder if notable country store slash park near us is having an event or something. We kept going along our usual path, and the blimp followed at that perfect speed, where it never looked like it moved to us, even as the buildings in front of us changed. It must have seemed to hang in the air with us for probably a solid two, three minutes, which now seems short, but at the time seemed like such a long amount of time. We hit a patch of trees right before the last gas station pre-fields, concealing the blimp from view for a moment. And we got around them and looked back, and there wasn't a blimp. We were shocked. Mom pulled off into the gas station so that we could circle back around, but no matter what way we looked at it, however many double takes we did, there was no blimp. I must emphasize that driving past this patch of trees took maybe five seconds max. I'm writing this like we were completely calm and collected, but no. We were literally shouting our disbelief at each other, each looking around frantically, but no matter where we looked, no blimp. I remember my mom looking at me and saying, where the hell did it go? Before realizing the swear, of course. I remember looking back at her, my little sci-fi mind already doing whirls and saying, I think there must be a secret base nearby. At the time, she had laughed, though a bit nervously, saying that it probably landed in a field nearby. Neither of us having something that couldn't wait an hour to get done, we decided to go exploring, try to find out what happened to it. We pulled out of the gas station and onto the back roads trying to find where it landed. We drove for an hour, trying every zigzag pattern we could. We went deeper into the country than we usually would, through some farms and forests, and all the way back to town in a massive loop. There was no blimp. It had simply vanished. We went home, filled with something between excitement and horror as we realized something actively weird and possibly supernatural had happened to us. We still didn't believe it, really. It had to have some explanation, right? We kept an eye on every news source that we could think of. My mom was always active in community groups on Facebook and the like, and we scanned there, but not a word was said about the blimp. We checked the website of the event park that we thought might be hosting it, but nothing was on their calendar. Nothing was said on the local news, in the paper, nothing was said at school or work. For all practical purposes, it seemed like no one else had seen it. Even probably ten years later, my mom makes jokes about this, saying that we're not crazy, they just want us to think that we are. We still have a half-joking hypothesis that there's some secret government base buried in the fields out back, or that maybe we were visited by little green men. It's the only supernatural event that my mom actually believes in. Well, excluding religion if you like to count that as supernatural. And it's because we saw it with our own eyes. But the thing is, ten years later, I've become much more interested in the supernatural. I've always been someone who, while fundamentally and truly a skeptic, has had a weird connection with things that I really shouldn't. I had a degenerative bone disease as a child, and my parents have told me that, literally before I can remember, I was describing to them a tourniquet being wrapped around my leg. Another time, I warned my mom to watch out for the angel when she went with my uncle for a motorcycle ride. And though that was a weird thing to say with, like, zero context, they were almost in an accident because, as they were driving, a garden statue of an angel fell off of a pickup truck. I literally can no longer count the number of times I've seen places in my dreams before I ever see them in real life. But when I see them, they're identical down to the tiniest detail. My mom and I make a half joke that her entire line is blessed with spiritual abilities in this way. 
my grandma and aunt always claimed that they saw spirits, which, to be honest, I always took with a grain of salt. And my mom has a very clear memory, right before my grandpa died, of seeing him in duplicate, a spirit version of him hovering over his body, like an astral projection. I have a lot of weird events that have happened to us, I will admit. Even if I intrinsically think that a lot of things are really less scary and less supernatural than they appear to be. I only discovered your channel this last winter, Raven, but it's been a part in a long chain of weird and slightly scary channels that I follow now. Like I said, I'm a skeptic. I look at things like this mostly for entertainment value, and I love the little adrenaline rush that these stories give me, but... While I keep hearing your glitch in the Matrix stories, I'm starting to think that this may be what happened to us. For some reason, the Matrix glitched in a blimp asset that matched pace with our car, could only be seen by us, and then glitched it back out. Maybe the blimp clipped between realities for a minute, or out of time. Maybe it slipped through a crack for just long enough for us to see it before returning to its rightful place. Or, maybe our initial guess was right, and either the government's doing some stuff that we really shouldn't have poked our noses as far into as we did, in hindsight, or it really was little green men paying us a visit in an oddly familiar craft. I don't know for sure. The only thing that I'm absolutely certain of is that, that day, ten years ago, we saw a blimp that simply blinked out of existence in the time it took us to drive past some trees. Thank you so much for taking the time to read this. I know it's long and kind of meandering, occupational hazards of an English major, I guess, but I hope this is something that you and your audience can enjoy. Hi, Raven. A few months ago, I dropped a Mucinex, an anti-congestion pill, on the floor. I watched as it fell all the way to the ground, but lost sight of it as it landed. The pill, for those who aren't familiar, are fairly large and white in color, and, in theory, should have been very easy to spot on the dark carpet. Still, I assumed that it just took an odd bounce and must be nearby, so... I searched for it for about five minutes or so, before finally giving up. As I was standing there thinking about where else it could have possibly bounced to, I put my hands in my pullover sweater pocket and felt the unmistakable shape of the aforementioned pill in my right pocket. This is where things get weird. I could feel the pill, but I couldn't remove it, because it wasn't inside my pocket, but rather inside of the cloth that makes up the pocket. I flipped the pocket inside out and could still feel the pill, but was unable to dislodge it, as it was quite literally on the inside of the material that makes up the pocket lining. At this point, I assumed that there must be a small hole inside my pocket, so I removed my sweater and spread it out flat on the floor. I put my hands on both the inside and outside of the pocket and tried to find a hole, but to no avail. There was no hole, and I had no way to explain how this pill was seemingly now sewn into my pullover. While I had no idea what the hell was going on, I knew that I should document the event, so I turned around and grabbed my cell phone off my desk. While I was trying to open up the camera app, Admittedly, I was a bit shaken at this point. In the corner of my eye, I noticed the large white pill sitting in the exact spot it had dropped originally, about six feet, or two meters, away from where it was before I turned around to grab my phone. I rechecked my sweater, which hadn't moved an inch, and it no longer contained a pill. To this day, it still doesn't have any sort of hole for a pill to fall into. After countless hours of thinking it through, I'm no closer to a logical explanation. The 
This glitch happened to me several years ago, when I was 15 years old. I've often wondered if other people had similar experiences, and then, since listening to Raven's channel, I'm relieved to know that I am not the only one who has experienced something very unusual. I was spending time at my grandparents' house, which consisted of six lightly wooded acres in the country. They had a nice barn and several other outbuildings, a small peach orchard, and they owned several horses and a couple of dogs. This was not an isolated area. The neighbor's house, outbuildings, chickens, and pet alpacas were clearly visible from my grandparents' property. After being out near the barn playing with the dogs one morning, I began to walk up the back steps to the house. For no particular reason, I glanced toward the neighbor's house next door. To my astonishment, there was no house. No outbuildings, no chickens, no alpacas, no trees. Just long prairie grass rippling in the wind. Confused, I looked towards my grandparents' barn. There was no barn. No dogs, no horses, no trees, just long, lush grass. I was no longer standing on the back steps, but on a flat prairie. The grass came up past my shoes, about halfway to my knees. I tried to comprehend what was happening, but I could no longer hear the familiar country sounds. I heard nothing but the wind passing through the seemingly endless prairie grass. It literally seemed to go on as far as I could see. I turned to look in the other direction, and suddenly everything snapped back into my regular reality. I was once again on the back steps, the dogs and horses were in the view, the neighbor's house was back in view, and their chickens and alpacas were going about their business, as if nothing unusual had occurred. I was astounded. I stood there for a few seconds, and then rushed into the back door. To my relief, everything was normal there in the house. My grandparents were getting ready for their day, preparing for breakfast, etc. This glitch, or whatever it was, has never happened again. Has anyone else had an experience like mine? Hi, Raven. Love the channel, keep up the great work. Have you ever wondered how many glitches go by unnoticed? Ever wondered how the Matrix resolves these glitches without revealing too much of itself? That's something that I've thought about quite often. Let me explain. Back in 2019, my partner and I were living in a two-bedroom apartment with our dog, Lily. Lily was a border collie and required a lot of exercise so we would make sure to take her for walks whenever possible. One morning, I woke up after sleeping in a little and realized that my partner had gone out. She must have gone to the shop, I thought. I walked out into the lounge room and noticed that Lily's leash was still hanging on the hook. I called out to Lily and she soon appeared behind the couch and came running to me. Oh, why didn't mom take you with her? I asked. I played with Lily for a while and then went to the office and logged onto my computer. Then, about a minute later, I heard the front door open. Babe, is that you? Where have you been? I went to the shop, she replied. Well, why didn't you take Lily? I asked. I did. I froze. What? That is impossible. I was just playing with Lily not more than a minute ago and a walk to the shop would take at least 10 minutes. Besides, wasn't Lily's leash hanging on the hook just now? Utterly confused, I stood up and walked into the hallway, and sure enough, there was Lily, standing in the open doorway, still wearing her leash that my partner was just then in the process of removing. My eyes must have almost popped out of my head. Slowly, I turned around and walked back to the office, trying to figure out what I had just seen. I had heard of glitches in the Matrix before. In fact, my workmate had mentioned the phenomenon just a few days prior. 
I was open to the idea, so I just put it down to that. But it got me thinking. What happened to my copy of Lily? Was she simply removed from the simulation? Did she cross over to another reality? One in which my partner never did take her to the shop? Who knows? What I do know is that whatever the Matrix did to resolve the glitch, it did so while my back was turned, while my attention was on my computer. I often wonder what would have happened if I had, for example, just sat there on the couch with my copy of Lily until my partner had come home with her copy. Then there would have been two Lilies in the same location. Surely the Matrix could not afford to reveal itself in such an obvious way, and would attempt to prevent such a situation from occurring. Setting off the smoke alarm, causing something to randomly crash from the office cupboard, anything to divert my attention, so that my copy of Lily could be safely despawned without me seeing it happen. As much as our simulated reality seems broken and buggy, it almost always seems to find an out. A way to resolve these glitches without revealing too much of itself. So, props to you, Matrix. Hi Raven. As I was listening to one of your Glitch in the Matrix videos, I remembered one of my own glitches that I had back when I was a teenager. I was 17, at home alone one weekend, and I wanted a treat. I found a box of cupcake mix, and I decided to make them. My kitchen is average sized, there's an island that sticks out to the left, and the rest of the cabinets and sink are across the room to the right. I set the box of cupcake mix on the island to the left, and crossed the kitchen to grab a mixing bowl. When I turned around to set the mixing bowl down on the island, the cupcake mix was gone. I didn't hear anything fall, but still my first thought was that it must have fallen on the ground. I looked, and it wasn't on the ground. I'm immediately confused and my heart is starting to race. I felt very unnerved and stood there looking around the kitchen for a moment. I remember saying out loud, what the hell? My second thought was, did I just lose time and have some sort of mental episode? To be clear, I have no mental illness and never had anything like this happen again. I wasn't sleep deprived, I wasn't on any mind altering substances. No one was home, so there's no way that someone moved it. If they had moved it, I would have been very obvious. I would have heard and seen someone in the kitchen with me. So, I snap out of freeze mode and I immediately start tearing through every cabinet and drawer. Right as I'm about to give up, I open the cutlery drawer, and there it is. The flipping box of cupcake mix. Laid flat, face up on top of my forks and spoons and knives. I literally set that box down on the kitchen island, turned around for less than 15 seconds to grab a bowl, and somehow that cupcake mix poofed into a closed cutlery drawer across the room that hadn't been opened the entire time this event took place. Why? How? What exactly was that? I'm open to any suggestions, and to Raven, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the wonderful stories you share and the calming delivery of these stories. I discovered your page when I was going through a hard time and listening to you read transported my mind, and it soothed my soul. Forever grateful and always looking forward to your next video, signed, Renee. Well, Renee, thank you very much for those kind words and I'm very happy to have helped. And also, I hope the cupcakes were good. Hi all. I'll start by saying that I'm the biggest skeptic that I know, but the following story is 100% true, and I have no idea how to explain it. So, 
My wife and I live in Liverpool, England, and have friends in Newcastle, which we visit about three times a year. We always take the same route, which is straight up the country on a motorway, then straight across the country on an A road, kind of like a right angle. We take the same route every time we go, and I know it like the back of our hand. So much so that we always have a pub lunch at the same place on the A road on our way to see our friends. On the day in question, everything was fine on the motorway, and my wife rang the pub to book our table for our lunch. A lady answered and booked us in. Now, this is where it gets strange. We exited the motorway and pulled onto the A road. Normally, when we start to drive down this A road, we drive through a village with picturesque cottages and guest houses, but the road was deserted. Also, there were no cars but ours on this road. We started to get concerned and pulled over. I got out of the car and walked around where the town should have been. It was eerily quiet, and there wasn't a house, cottage, or anything else in sight. My wife said, let's just carry on to the pub and get some lunch. So, we carried on, and where the pub should have been, it was just wasteland. Not even a hint that the pub was there. Now, absolutely panicking, we drove as quickly as we could to our friend's house, which was still an hour away. But after about 20 minutes, we started to notice cars again on the road and we got to our friends and told them about the incident. They said that we probably just turned off at the wrong exit and laughed it off. We had a good weekend, and on our way home, I told my wife to ring the pub and we'll just have our lunch on the way home instead. So, she rang the pub and booked us in. This is the thing that has haunted me since it happened. When we got there, we were greeted by a young waitress who said it was lovely to see us again. I said, I don't think we've met, have we? And she said that we were in on Saturday for lunch. We made our excuses, and we left straight away. We still don't talk about it. Hey Raven, I'm a very new listener of the channel, and this is my very first story. This might not be particularly scary or interesting, and it might not even be a glitch per se, but in my honest opinion, I believe it was. A teensy bit of context first. My parents' relationship is really rocky, and they fight a lot over stupid, petty reasons. But... There are times when they tolerate each other. However, this recent fight, or rather tantrum as you'll soon find out, it was started over literally nothing. The day before yesterday, and for a pretty good while before then, my parents were getting along completely fine. That particular day, they were chatting and having normal conversations about summer plans before Dad left for work. Mom and my sibling and I had a normal rest of the night. We went to bed at our usual time, and then Dad came home at around midnight. I was in bed at this time, searching for ASMR videos to fall asleep to, and I heard Dad shuffle around downstairs before heading upstairs, walking past my room and into their bedroom where Mom was already in bed. Minutes later, though, I heard their door open and Mom's footsteps descending down the stairs. She went into the kitchen and stopped. I didn't hear anything else after that. Then Dad's footsteps came from the room and descended down the stairs and into the kitchen, and he stopped there too. I still didn't hear anything. It was completely silent. No talking, no shuffling, no noises whatsoever. Our house is pretty small, and when my parents speak, they never talk at an acceptable volume. They shout. No matter what. 
It could be a quiet place and they would still be shouting at each other. I immediately thought, what the hell are they doing? Not even a minute went by and Mom just as silently walked back upstairs and went back into their bedroom. Dad followed a little while after, also completely silent. The next day, Mom and Dad were not talking to each other at all. I've experienced the silent treatment before, but I remember what happened the previous night, so I was even more confused this time around. Mom didn't even eat lunch with Dad, something she always did despite their other fights. Then, today, in the morning, Dad left early for work and Mom broke down and cried and threw a huge tantrum, thinking that my sibling and I couldn't hear her. She kept sobbing loudly about how Dad was so mean, how he was a bad person. I've gotten this treatment from her plenty of times, the last time being over my personal choice to buy and use makeup, so I mainly just got really annoyed. But at the same time, I was even more confused. Nothing happened. There was no argument or fight that night. I quite literally heard nothing. When Dad got home, they still refused to talk to each other until Mom finally decided to break the ice, and then they actually started a huge shouting match tantrum, in the open garage in front of all the neighbors, no less. They didn't get involved in the end. Mom was yelling that Dad thinks he can do what he wants, and Dad was yelling that Mom needs to get off his back. It was really nonsensical babble that had nothing to do with anything. They screamed to the point where I was fully expecting Dad to just pick up a tool and smack Mom with it. Eventually, they both calmed down after almost screaming their lungs out, and then did a full 180. They suddenly started talking normally. Like I said, they are always shouting, but this was the normal shouting that I mentioned earlier. And they were getting along. They started talking about summer plans again, and then about the dessert they were going to have at that moment. I'm still so confused as to what exactly happened, and honestly, I'm a little scared. I feel like either this was a glitch, or both of my parents went insane and got possessed for a bit. Hi Raven, my sister and I are big fans of your channel, and we're talking about our own glitch experiences, so I figured I would share them here. Story 1. My sister and I shared a room growing up, and we played together a lot. We had a toy oven in our room, and one day we decided to put one of our dolls in there. It was a blonde porcelain type doll in a pretty dress. While the doll baked, we both left the room and played in the living room. We were together the whole time. Eventually, we decided to check on our cooking and went to open the toy oven, and when we did, there was a completely different doll in there. It was now a Raggedy Ann doll, with red yarn hair, stitches in her dress, and a soft body, which is very different from the doll that we put in there. We were both shocked and confused. We looked for the original doll for years, and we never found it again. Even as adults now, we both swear that we did not switch the doll, and it still weirds us out. We have many other instances of lost objects, small toys, a ring, etc. disappearing, and being found under our front porch. But while we checked there a few times in hopes that it would reappear too, that doll seemed to glitch out of existence. And story two. One morning, my sister and I woke up and started talking about a weird dream that we'd had. Both of us dreamt that there was a figure standing in our front lobby. We could both recall hearing him, and going down there to see him, and then hiding from him. If there really was an intruder, why did we both wake up in our beds and both recall this as a dream? If it was a dream, why did we both share it that night?
Hi, Raven. I want to start by saying that I love your channel and that you get me through a lot of lonely nights on my overnight job. And that I really appreciate that. Well, of course, very happy to help. Ironically enough, it's at my job where my story takes place. It's not the longest or even most chilling story, but I wanted to contribute in some small way. Anyway, I'm a receptionist who does the overnight, night audit shift at a four-star hotel. It's not old or anything, it's actually quite modern. And to be clear, I have never touched any types of drugs and only drink alcohol on my days off. So there was nothing inhibiting me at all. One night, in the middle of the night, probably 2 or 3 a.m., I was doing my regular duties, one of which was to give the floors a mop to get them respectable the next day. The whole back wall of the foyer area is a huge mirror, like the entire wall is literally a mirror. Anyways, I was doing my cleaning when I look up and my reflection in this mirror was much bigger than it should have been as if I was standing nose to nose with it, when I was about 40 feet away from it. And it was standing and watching me, not doing what I was doing. It only lasted a second or two before I looked away and looked back and it was being normal again, but it stuck with me. That was many years ago and I've been working here for well over a decade now, and that's the strangest thing to ever happen on my shift. Although, there have been other minor things. It's strange noises, bumps in the night, flickering lights at 3am while listening to a scary story about 3am on another YouTube channel. But nothing that I can't give a rational explanation to or say that it's just a coincidence like that. However, I've thought about this for years and even looked at the same mirror. It's pretty hard to avoid, literally thousands of times, and never had another glitch like that one. Anyways, that's my story. What does everyone else think? Possible glitch in the Matrix? Something paranormal trying to spook me? Could there really be something on the other side of the mirror? I swear that this account is completely true, and is indeed my own personal experience. Have a good day, friends, and please, share those stories. So that, my friends, was this week's collection of Glitch in the Matrix Stories. Stories that tell the strange happenings of our matrix i had this nice little strange thing i was gonna say there planned out and then as i said excuse me as i said it i hiccuped uh as i said it i uh i mentally froze and i don't know why like there was no reason for me to have frozen there i just did my brain is doing a good night i guess is gonna go bed now hopefully you all enjoyed this collection of glitch in the matrix stories this glitchy good collection Yep, there it goes again. This collection of stories, that's just weird. Just good stuff. Just just good glitchy stories. What am I even trying to say anymore? Um, if you did, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, consider subscribing. That does help tremendously. Um, you can also uh, join Patreon or memberships. What is wrong with me today? Patreon and memberships, where you can get early access to content like this or other things, depending on what you sign up for and how you sign up for it. And of course, there's the other thing you can do, which is leaving me a comment. Now, on Glitch Mondays, we do what is called the Word of the Week. Last week, there was no Word of the Week because it was a compilation. So reaching back two weeks ago, a significant number of you commented your sentences for the Word of the Week. Those comments are up on the screen right now, and of course, all of these people are amazing. I mean, you're all amazing, but this group of people is amazing plus one. That's right. They went above and beyond, left me a comment with the word of the week. They didn't have to, and they still did, and I love them so very much for it. So, 
Thank you to each and every single one of you who did leave me a comment, and to those of you who did not. Meow. Meow, apparently. Um, let's move on to this. Oh, I need more water, apparently. Uh, let's move on to this week's Word of the Week. This week's Word of the Week is unconditional. U-N-C-O-N-D-I-T-I-O-N-A-L, which is without conditions or limitations, absolute. Not conditional, limited, or conditioned, made without condition. And absolute and without conditions, limitations, etc. What's funny, those three definitions came from the same website, and they are all three the same definition, just reworded, apparently? Whatever. You know what unconditional means. It's, uh, it's a preconditioned word to be negative, so... Um, yeah. Anyways, my friends, I hope you have a beautiful day, beautiful rest of your day, beautiful rest of your week, and I hope you're doing fantastically. And of course, until I see you again, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you're the best you that you can be, don't forget it, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And of course, until I see you again, my lovely friends, much love, and sleep well.